Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the crochet class cow. This is a great first project if you're learning how to crochet and want to learn a few basic stitches. For this project, you'll need a six millimeter J crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. You'll also need your yarn. I made my cows here in two different yarns to show you the difference. Uh, it's the same pattern, but this one was crocheted with the uh, Vanna's Choice by Lion Brand. This is the Kelly Green. And then this is uh, Karen's Simply Soft Eco. And you can see this one and this one, how they look a little bit different, but it's the same pattern. So feel free to substitute yarn. Just look for something that recommends a J hook, or you can switch the hook size to make it a little bit narrower or larger, depending on what you want. This pattern has panels, and what I mean by panels are just sections of single crochet stitches, double crochet stitches, and treble crochet stitches. So it allows you to really explore, those are the double crochet, it allows you to really explore um, and practice these stitches over and over and over again. So let's get started. I also wanted to mention at the end we'll be seaming this, but you can make yours extra long and make it a scarf as well if you're not ready to seam yet. Um, I left this seam exposed and I did it with a contrasting yarn just to show you and we'll seam it together at the end, but you see I did it in the green so you can see. So let's get started. We're going to begin our cowl by putting a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, then reach in with your crochet hook and bring up the loop and then tighten it onto your hook. We're going to make a starting chain of 16. And I'm going to leave our finished cowl over here as a handy reference as we're going through the pattern. So we're going to make a starting chain of 16. To make a chain, wrap the yarn around your hook and pull it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. You want to make your chains fairly loose so it doesn't draw up the bottom. If you're having trouble getting your starting chain loose enough, you can always go up a hook size for the starting chain and then go back to your regular hook to work the rest of the pattern. Next, we're going to start the foundation row. We're going to begin with the first panel, which is single crochet, and that's worked for six inches before we are going to switch to the next stitch. So in the second chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. So one, two, in the second chain from the hook, we're going to work a single crochet. To make a single crochet, insert the hook into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. That's the single crochet. I also have a video for the single crochet stitch if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this stitch. Next, we're going to work a single crochet in each chain all the way across to the end of the row. And again, this will give you lots and lots of practice when you're learning how to make these stitches. When you're learning to crochet, the name of the game is to practice, practice, and practice some more. And that will help your um, tension. It will help everything look nice and even the more you practice. and. When you're learning how to crochet, I wouldn't concern yourself too much with speed. That will come later. I would just focus on mastering the stitches. And then after you master the stitches, you will pick up a little bit more speed. But I wouldn't worry about that too much in the beginning. Okay, so we just worked a single crochet all the way across. And then we're going to chain one and turn our work. 
Then we'll work a single crochet in the first stitch. You can see it's a little hole in the first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. And that is how you work the first panel. I refer to these as panels, but they're just really sections of stitches. This is kind of like a super easy, basic sampler cow, if you will. So we're just working single crochets all the way across our row till the end. So what you're going to do when you come to the end is the row that we're working on now, you're just going to repeat this row for six inches from where you started. So let's put this aside just for a moment. So you're just gonna repeat the row we just completed over and over and over until you have six inches. So because we're doing a little sample size here, we're gonna move on to the next panel. The next panel is our, you can see it right here, is our double crochet panel. To move on to the next panel, after you've worked your six inches, we're going to chain two, one, two, and turn. Then we're going to work a double crochet into the first stitch and in every stitch across. Okay. To make a double crochet, I made a few already, but to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around your hook, insert the hook into the stitch, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. I also have, um, similar to the single crochet, I also have a video for the double crochet stitch as well. So we're just gonna be working double crochets all the way across until we get to the end of the row. Whoops. Pull some more yarn out. And then just keep going all the way across. And this is also gonna have a uh, panel of six inches as well. So what you'll do is come to the end of the row here with your double crochets and then the row we just did where we did a chain two, turned our work, worked double crochets all the way across, you'll do this row for six inches as well. So if we come back to our finished cow, we have six inches here of double crochet stitches. So then what we're gonna do is work the third panel. Again, this is my sampler. Obviously yours will be much larger than this. Our third panel is the treble crochet. So it's gonna look kind of like this. So what we're gonna do for this panel is chain three, one, two, three, and turn. Then we're going to work a treble crochet in the first stitch and in every stitch across. To make a treble crochet, wrap yarn around the hook two times, insert the hook into the stitch, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. That's the treble crochet stitch. And again, I also have a video for the treble crochet stitch if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this particular stitch. So we're just gonna keep working treble crochets all the way across to the end in each stitch. And the treble crochet panel of our project or section has, uh, is six inches as well. So we're just gonna keep working our treble crochet stitches all the way across. And you'll have, you will repeat this for six inches. As you can see, 
The treble crochet stitches are very, very tall. So you'll probably whiz through this section pretty fast when you're making your cowl. The single crochet stitches are the shortest stitches. So those, um, because they're shorter in height, well, that section takes a little bit longer. But it's a great way to practice your stitches when you're learning how to crochet. Or if you're just, a lot of people leave comments on the Fiberflux blog that they're coming back to crochet after many years and just need a, to brush up a little bit on their stitches. So this is a great project to do before committing to a project that has lots of different stitches. You can just make a little project to practice. So we've completed a treble crochet row and you'll just repeat this row for the next six inch panel. If we go back to our finished piece, it will look kind of like this. So you'll just keep doing that until the cowl is as long as you would like it to be. And I made mine for a total of 36 inches. That gave me a good um, circumference of my cowl. Then when you're finished, we're going to seam the cowl together. Now again, if you want to make your cowl into a scarf, you can just skip this part, just make it as long as you would like it. Just keep repeating the pattern until it's as long as you would like it. If you would make a, like to make a cowl, you'll want to seam it. So let's go ahead and do that part. I'm gonna take our finished cowl here and we're gonna seam this cowl because this is our finished cowl. I've left it unseamed and I've tied on some contrasting yarn Instead of using the same color, you'll want to use the same color so everything blends, but I've tied on a contrasting color just to show you and so you can see it really easily. And when you're crocheting, before you stop, when you're in the very last row, instead of cutting the yarn, you can use that working piece to crochet it together. If you'd rather use a tapestry needle and sew it together, you can cut the yarn thread a new tail, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So what you're gonna do is, I would find it beneficial, and you can do whatever you want, but I added a couple rows of single crochet onto the end of my cowl, because I started with single crochet, and that will help it to line up very, very nicely. If you have, um, if you end on the other stitches, that's fine too, but I thought that it would make a nice, even, nice and neat edge. You can see they kind of line up very nicely together. So what I did is I just tied, I took a, just a piece of contrasting yarn just to show you, but you'll wanna take a piece of matching yarn um, or just use the working yarn that's still connected. Don't cut it when you finish. Um, but because I'm using separate yarn, I had to cut mine. So anyway, I just tied them together and then you can, this little tail, you can weave that in as you go along. And you'll just want to take your yarn and you'll want to insert it into the first stitch of the first side and the stitch on the other side. I have to look around for it. So I have my hook in both sides and then I'm going to wrap the yarn around the hook, and bring it through the entire thing, just like that. Okay, so there's two ways you can crochet it together. You can slip stitch it together or you can work a single crochet. The slip stitch will be a little bit more of an invisible seam. It'll lay a little bit flatter. The single crochet stitch, when you, uh, when you single crochet it together, it will have more of a ridge. So it's totally up to you. Some people even kind of go on that idea and use it to make a decorative seam. So it's totally up to you. So let's keep going across. You're just going to insert it into both loops there of the first side, both loops of the second side. And again, I have this little tail I'm weaving it in as I go along, bring it through both layers. And then at this point you can do a slip stitch or a single crochet. I'm going to do a single crochet just to show you. Actually, let's do half single, half slip, just to show you. So go through both layers again, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through both layers, wrap the yarn around the hook, 
bring it through both loops, just like that. So you're just going to keep going all the way across and I'm going to switch gears a little bit here and show you the slip stitch seaming method as well. So do the same thing. Just pull the yarn through all the layers and then bring this loop through that loop. And then when we're finished, I'll be able to show you side by side the difference. So we're just going to go across our seam and you'll want to stop and periodically check to make sure that everything is lining up properly at the end. So we're just going through all the layers again, just like that. So I'm just going to stop here. I just fastened off, but you can see a little bit how the, the single crochet is a tiny bit taller than that. So let's turn it out to the other side. And you can see if you were to use matching yarn, it's pretty invisible. Let's flip over here and you can see the single crochet seam versus the slip stitch seam. So then when you're finished seaming everything up, let's turn it that way. There we go. When you're finished seaming everything up, just thread your tapestry needle. And again, with matching yarn, this would be much prettier and match a lot nicer, but for learning purposes. Um, and I like to come in one direction and then come back in the other direction. And that'll kind of lock that little stitch into place. Then just take your scissors and trim. And as an option, before you seam your piece, let's zoom out a tiny bit. There we go. Before you, you seam your piece, you can give it a little twist. See, if you look at mine, I have a little twist in mine. I gave it one twist. And then what that will do, if we lay our cowl out, when you wear it, There we go. When you wear it, it'll make a really nice triangle and lay nice and flat. However, on this one here, I did not twist it just to show you the difference. Again, we have a contrasting seam, so we can just ignore that for learning purposes. But anyway, if you don't twist it, it'll kind of lay like that. So if we put them side by side, it's really a personal preference, however you want it to lay. This will also kind of look like that if you scrunch it up a little bit. So you can give it a little twist or not, it's up to you. And that is how you crochet the Crochet Class Cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.